Hello and welcome back to Rachel's studio where you learn not just the how but the why of watercolor so you move along your art journey a lot faster and in today's video we're gonna look at some of the very best shorts that have gone for me viral and for a special bonus I'm gonna share a bunch of footage of Sam the tuxedo I think this is the best tutorial I've ever made and it's been really popular with my Patreon students so I want to share a little bit more of Sam who is a tuxedo cat so be sure to watch to the very end where I will share how to paint a tuxedo cat in watercolor. So let's go ahead and get started. You're going to love this new watercolor trick I've been trying out. I want to show you some tape techniques. I recently was reading International Artist Magazine in the watercolor section. John Lovett was talking about using tape. And I was also noticing Thomas Schallers, and he's also very active on Facebook. I was noticing he used these really interesting lightened strips of elements in his composition, like strips of light. I asked him how he did it. He said lifting. I dug through some of my old paintings. If there were any paintings that I thought would lend themselves well to demonstrating this, what you're gonna need is tape and magic eraser. So the original is the one that doesn't have anything added to it. So you can scrub and lighten with this. So the main idea is put tape down around the area you want to lighten, scrub it with a magic eraser blot, and it'll lighten that area that you taped off. You know you don't need to buy a bunch of paint tubes, right? Here's why. Yesterday I compared two grays, neutral tint and Payne's gray, which as you learned are just convenient mixes of paints you probably already have, including lamp black and thalo blue. Because both Payne's gray and neutral tint contain lamp black and thalo blue, I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone and recommend you not buy these extra paint tubes, but just mix your own grays with that lamp black we know and love like I used in this bunny painting and avoid thalo blue because it is staining and it's hard to use my favorite lifting techniques like I often do with staining paint. The only time I like to use thalo blue, by the way, is when I want to get a lot of cauliflowers, like in this gosh awful ugly Christmas painting where I wanted a snowy background. Instead of a mix with thalo blue, I prefer to mix in my favorite non-staining blues like ultramarine blue and cobalt. So my conclusion for you is skip buying these convenience mixes of Payne's gray and neutral tint and just make your own superior anyway mixes. Hope that helps. Are you having trouble getting your subject to stand out? Try using contrast. This is a light green bird. So in the background, I want a darker color and I want a color that's across the color wheel from green, which I chose purple. So I make the background a darker purple, darker because that contrasts with the lightness of the bird and purple because it contrasts with the green of the bird. Yet another way to add contrast that I didn't do in this painting is with color saturation. In this painting, the color is very bright green, very color pop saturated pure green. You can also use contrast in saturation. So I could have used a gray or purple in the background to make the green of the bird sing even louder and appear even brighter than it is. So that'll become my next experiment. My favorite red, be sure to watch my video, my 10 favorite colors that I cannot live without, which you see here, one being M. Graham, naphthol red. And one of the things I love about this paint is it has this beautiful diffusion. So it just seeps into everywhere. Like if I put a big puddle of water here, watch what happens if I drop it into this puddle, it explodes. Boom. All right, now watch. Will other paints do that? Let's see. Let's try burnt sienna. Nope, nope, it's not exploding. What if we put red right there? Boom, look at it explode. Naphthol red is so cool for that. And it can really be a powerful paint color to paint with because of that. And also it's just a gorgeous red that mixes equally well with yellow and blue, the other two primaries. What does that tell you? That it's a pretty pure red. Got a subject that looks like a cutout, whether it's a tree, a horse, a dog, a person. What you can do is paint a glaze of tea consistency paint over the shadow side of your subject. Remember also that your painting has to be completely dry before you paint over it with a tea consistency glaze like I'm doing here. Now it doesn't have to be blue, but in this painting I used blue and I painted over the right side of the dog, which in the reference photo is already in shadow. So this accomplished two goals. One, it helped tell the story of the light and how the light is hitting the dog. 
and two, it helped make my dog look like less of a cutout and more integrated into the painting. Someone recently asked me if you can get the fur out effect only lamp black does if you mix it with other colors. The short answer is yes-ish. It's not as dramatic, but I love the subtle effects I get mixing lamp black with ultramarine blue and Windsor violet for this tuxedo cat I'm painting as a start to finish real time tutorial for my Patreon members. First, you see me getting the area to be painted with clear water to set my watercolors up to paint themselves. Then I drop in Windsor Violet, then Ultramarine Blue, then add cream consistency, lamp black, and allow them all to mix together on the wet paper. But if you follow me, you know I love what I call the buckling stage, where the paper starts to buckle from absorbing water, and I like the splat water to get dreamy cauliflower effects. I did that here, and look at the drama it adds to the cat's fur. I pushed it even further by dropping in Windsor Green Gold on the cheek and eye. Now look how gorgeous that is. So I'm reading a new book about portraits by Charles Reed. I'll put a link in the description if I can. He was talking about painting darks in your painting and I've always heard put super darks to create contrast and interest and he says the opposite. He says, limit darks if you're going for a transparent look. And I quote, try to find a value that's just dark enough to offset your light values, but not so dark that it will destroy the feeling of light and atmosphere. I love that. So I used a lot of super darks in this painting and it definitely has a certain look. In this painting, I limited my darks very much and it has a very atmospheric look so that kind of applies to those paintings and then for this painting that I'm working on now it's a commission of a tuxedo cat a black and white cat so I am experimenting with can I use darker colors of purple and blue to make to deceive the viewers eye into thinking they're seeing a very black and white cat but my use of full on black is very limited to the most important areas like around the eye where I'm creating really high contrast around the eyes but the rest is a lot more colorful and a lot less super dark black. They are called wisp brushes but this is a wisp brush which is great for painting a lot of natural textures. Let's see the wisp brush in action. So here's my wisp brush and I'm just painting on some fur. Sometimes I use it in a flat orientation and sometimes I use it in a side orientation to get different textures. A wisp brush is also great for painting textures like grasses, which are very similar to fur if you think about it. So here I'm painting some grasses with some green paint and it just looks so natural and I just love the effect that this wisp brush gives. It's also known as a rake brush. They sell these in sets on Amazon. You can find them in pretty much any art store. So I hope you will enjoy adding this to your arsenal of paint brushes that are really fun to work with. One of my students showed me her notebook that she made just about everything that she was learning from my tutorial because it was a little overwhelming. They're almost like courses, which normally would cost $200. So yeah, it is a good deal for you to get it at just the $8 level. And that is why soon it will move to the $13 and maybe even the $30 tiers. And there's over a hundred other tutorials that are available. I've left a lot of my older tutorials at the $5 Patreon level. You will learn a lot about watercolor painting and it will help you create your own style. All right, let's take a look at some footage of Sam. And these are gonna be outtakes of my painting of Sam and some of the highlights of some of the demos and explanations I gave my students for this tutorial. So let's take a look. I think my favorite thing about this painting was the underpainting. And I did a whole video last week about underpainting. So I will link that here and just know it will not take you out of this video. It will just queue it up for you to watch later. But I learned something interesting when I did this underpainting. Colors that normally would create mud if you mix them together can make magic if you mix them optically. What does mix optically mean? Well, in watercolor painting, it means painting a glaze letting it completely dry, then painting another color over it and let it completely dry. 
The effect is much like the color mixing you would get from laying different colored pieces of saran wrap on top of each other. Instead of muddying each other, somehow they just enhance each other, even if they're almost perfect complements. For example, look at how I did this after I painted the first layer on Sam, then let it dry. Purple and green are not perfect complements, I know, but they are still across each other on the color wheel, meaning if you mix them together, it would be a muddy mess. But look what happens when I paint green over this purple underpainting. It just seems to sparkle. It just looks so nuanced and beautiful. Another favorite part for me of this underpainting was playing with this Holbein Opera color, which is fugitive and must be sprayed with either UV fixative or framed under UV protecting glass. But I love how this opera really enlivened this painting. Another subtle thing I did with Sam to make him look extra dreamy is to paint light clouds of tea consistency paint over several edges, including the bottom left shoulder area, over his ears and along the bottom of the painting to soften and dreamify everything. One way I did this too was spray it. Let's take a look at some footage from my Patreon tutorial of how I softened and dreamified one edge. A little fade out look just naturally is there. And then I'm gonna let this set some, right? And then just spray some of this to maybe soften some of it. because this is an unimportant area and we need some dreamy edges. So I'm gonna let that do whatever it wants to do. This is where I have a sizing issue right here where it's really bleeding out a lot. You can see the irregularity in my paper, unfortunately. And I had a little bit of sizing issue, but I'll go in later and add a little more paint over it to kind of cover that up. Oops. <laughs> to make it look more natural, I'm just going to shake it a little, but I want to let the paint do what it wants to do there. So I did a lot of extra demos and explanation. I call this for my Patreon tutorials. I'll, I call these my highly edited tutorials, which I share at higher level tiers, including my highest tier, which is a $30 tier where I share uh, professional level, gallery level paintings that have gotten into national shows, which right now I only have two paintings, but I hope to continue to add to that mix. And I might eventually put Sam in that category because this is such a good tutorial. Let's look at a few more outtakes from this tutorial. All right, I'm gonna show this next section of footage sped up once and then we'll watch it again in real time. But I just wanted a little extra time to explain what I'm doing. I'm using my six round, that might even be my four round. And the area around the eye is extra important because that is where your viewer is gonna look the most. So you really want your details on point. You want everything to look really good around your eye. So what I did first was I pre-wet the area with clear, clean water. And what that does is it allows you to float in the watercolor paint and it kind of blends itself and looks softer. And what I was noticing about the black right above the cat's eyes, it looks really velvety and smooth and super dark. So I wanted this area to look really smooth and super dark. So I'm putting in a pretty rich milk consistency uh, background color and underpainting. This will be the underpainting of blues and purples, milk consistency. You almost can't go too dark here because we're going to put more black. And here I'm floating in some cream consistency lamp black right over that damp paper. And the reason why I did that is I just wanted to look really velvety above the eye, just like it does in the reference, and then putting tiny little details under the eye area and paying attention to the direction of the fur and painting in the direction of the fur and about the length of the fur is about how long your brush stroke is going to be. So just pay extra attention around the eye because that is where your viewer is going to look. And I always like to connect the pupil with the eyeliner. So notice how I made the pupil touch the top of the eye. I almost always do that. It almost always looks better. So the cat doesn't look like a zombie. Cats can look like zombies really fast if you don't do that. And then I put a little black eyeliner on the bottom and connected that to the bottom bits of fur. So connection is really important. 
For the next 20 minutes, I created extra footage demonstrating how to mix water with the paint to get the correct paint to water ratio for the desired darkness when painted on the paper. My mixing went a little bit off camera, so I wanted to make extra footage of me mixing so you guys could see more clearly what I was doing as far as mixing is concerned. For those of you who are super beginners, the more water you add to your paint, the lighter it will dry. You'll hear me say tea consistency, milk, and cream consistency. And what I'm referring to is how much water I've added to the paint. Tea consistency paint has the most water added and results in the lightest colors. And you'll see me tilt the palette and the water runs or almost runs. And then milk consistency has less water added, but it's still pretty watery. So when you tilt your palette up, it doesn't happen perfectly every time, but for the most part, it will bead and maybe drip a little bit. And then cream consistency paint just has a tiny bit of water. It does need a little bit of water added, but when you tilt your palette up, it won't run at all. And when you paint with cream consistency paint, it results in dark, rich colors. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you would like to watch more of these paintings, more in depth, be sure to join my Patreon. And remember, if you join for a year, you can get more in-depth art critiques and you can also get critiques free by joining my Facebook group. And if you ask for feedback, my members and I will give you ideas on how to improve your paintings if you ask for it. So I would love to have you join there. And here's a little sneak peek of one of my newest tutorials that I'm really excited about. I'm starting to paint Christmas tutorials with my online students. So be sure to join my Patreon, start working on ideas, start practicing your skills for painting those Christmas paintings, because I already have one painting up that I think will make beautiful Christmas cards. Check out this cardinal painting. And yes, I did get footage of my cardinal painting with cardinals outside my window. And how adorable is this, this baby cardinal begging for food. But anyway, Yes, I'm chasing butterflies now, so I better go. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. And until next time, go watercolor your world. Bye, everybody.